Some reptiles don't get the love or respect that they deserve. I would call these underrated reptiles. So today I put together a list of the top five underrated reptiles in my opinion. I'm Adam, this is Littlefoot, this is Wiggins Wiggins Reptiles, stick around. set some criteria for what a underrated reptile is. Um, underrated reptiles I would say are ones that are out in the pet trade, they're kind of available or at least available in most areas of somewhere in North America is where I'm talking about, um, but they don't really see a lot of uh, attention or a lot of space on tables at expos or space in pet shops or reptile shops. These are the reptiles that I think need more attention, need to be talked about a little bit more because they make great pet reptiles and some people don't even know they exist. So let's start off with number one, egg-eating snakes. Now, I don't have an egg-eating snake, and we'll get to that at the end, why I don't have one, but I think these are great for a lot of, not really beginners, but if you're an intermediate or someone who has been keeping reptiles for long enough to really understand how to make things like humidity and temperature work and thermal gradients, you're good to go. I don't think it's a beginner snake, and here's why. Egg-eating snakes eat eggs, you guessed it. And that's the reason I don't have one, because Either you're gonna need finch eggs uh, when they're really small. Quail eggs are pretty easy to find everywhere, but finch eggs or um, any sort of egg that is of that size is sometimes very hard to find. And in my area, for whatever reason, I can't find a pet store that wants to cooperate and give me their finch eggs or let me buy their finch eggs. So for that reason, I haven't got one because I can't secure a food source. And I think that's why perhaps these guys are underrated or there's not a lot of them in the pet trade, not a ton of them anyway, uh, because they don't have teeth, so that's super cool, right? Like, if you look at a picture of uh, one eating an egg, like, you've probably seen this meme before, right? That's an egg-eating snake. These guys are from Africa. Uh, you don't need crazy temperatures or humidity to facilitate having these guys. They stay super small. If they try to bite you, they don't have teeth. They have, like, these bony projections on the back of their vertebrae. They poke holes in the egg with these... Uh, vertebrae projections that they have. They suck the contents of the egg out and then they regurgitate or kind of spit out uh, the shell. It doesn't even go all the way down into their stomach. So they're a very unique species. They're, I can't think of any other species that is like this and for that reason I think they're super cool. Number five, egg-eating snakes. Number four is one that you might not even know exists. Now of course if you are a reptile enthusiast through and through you probably have heard of the, about these guys. Maybe you've never seen one, and if you're new to reptiles, you might not even know what this thing is. It looks like a dragon, kind of. And what I'm talking about are plated lizards. So I'm talking about Sudan plated lizards and giant plated lizards. And I don't know too much about yellow-throated plated, plated lizards, and there might be others. But those are ones I'm talking about, Sudans and giants. Um, these guys are very similar. They're very cool lizards. The reason I have them so low on the list, or number four, or like high on the list, however you want to put it, is because they do need UVB, so they're not really going to be suited uh, for someone who is a beginner. And here's what I mean. Bearded dragons, a lot of the time, people call them beginner lizards. I don't think they are because they do require uh, quite high UVB. Uh, they need a lot of UVB, and they need high temperatures. And Sudan plated lizards are the same. They need to be dry, drier than your house most likely, very hot. Uh, and of course, they want it. They, they need UVB as well to survive. But if you've kept something like a bearded dragon... Uh, in great husbandry or great condition for a long time and you've had great success, this might be the lizard for you. They look a little bit more interesting in my opinion. Smaller head, um, they, they're not as common for sure, so people are going to ask you questions if they see that you have one in your collection. And they don't get super big. They get impressively large, like they get about the size of a bearded dragon. Some people will say even more stout than a bearded dragon. Uh, and they're not super fast and they're handleable most of the time. You have to start with them when they're younger. I don't think they're as easy as a bearded dragon to tame down, but they can be handled, and basically all of them that I've ever seen on the market are in people's hands, kind of like Littlefoot is here with me. Uh, and I think that it's very interesting to have an animal that a lot of people might not even know about and be able to handle them, right? And they're interesting eaters, they are omnivores, and they're diurnal, which means they're out during the day. So Littlefoot here is out during the night, so you don't really see her out during the day a lot. But if you're the type of person, I don't know, if you uh, don't work during the day, you work at night and you want to have a lizard that you can look at, this is the one for you. So number four is plated lizards. And let's just move right on to number three. This is a super underrated reptile in my opinion. Web-footed geckos are number three. 
what is a web footed gecko? I think you mean fan footed gecko, right? No, these are different things. Fan footed gecko, web footed gecko, different species. I can find fan footed geckos everywhere. They get a little bit bigger. Uh, you can't really keep them in groups. Web foot geckos or web footed geckos are super cool. They're super tiny, bug eyed. They've got these fans for feet uh, and they've got this translucent skin. They're very unique. I've never seen anything like them. They are very small. But what's really interesting and what is very different compared to a lot of, of other uh, animals or other reptiles especially, no one's going to give you a hard time about cohabitating these guys because it's actually recommended for people who uh, actually breed these guys that I know of, people who breed web-footed geckos, to keep them together. And big difference, you can keep males together. A lot of people will keep three males and five females together. This is mind-blowing for me because I've never heard of another animal like this or another lizard like this. There are some snakes, which we'll get to later, but this is very interesting and totally new to me. They're very fast. They're insectivores, so it's really fun to watch them eat. Um, there's kind of, it's kind of up for debate whether they're crepuscular or nocturnal. I've even read some places they're diurnal, but either way, they don't need a ton of space because they're super small. They're very tiny, which means that you're not going to have to have a giant, uh, space for them. They do not need UVB light either. So, which makes me think they're obviously either crepuscular or nocturnal, but either way, they're not going to need any sort of UVB lighting, which in my opinion makes it so much easier because new keepers, especially if the light runs out, you don't know. And some people don't replace them in time and you get sick animals. So because they're easy to feed, they're easy to keep. They don't take up a lot of space and you can keep them in really cool groups. I'm going to give these number three web footed geckos and the number two, most underrated reptile in the pet trade, in my opinion, are jeweled lacertas. And I think this is because not a lot of people even know these things exist. They're gaining a little bit of popularity, which is why I didn't have them at number one, but they're pretty easy to take care of as long as you can get that UVB thing on point, which is really not that hard in my opinion. Um, and they're diurnal and they have got these like little tegu personalities. So if you want a tegu, but you don't have a giant eight by three foot space for a tegu inside, then maybe a Lacerta is better for you. You can actually watch a whole care guide right here about my jeweled Lacerta Bob, who is outside right now and coming inside uh, next week, likely. So jeweled Lacertas, they do need UVB light. They don't need a crazy hot temperature. They need a little bit of humidity. So they're not a beginner reptile, I would say, but they don't get super big. About 24, 30 inches is a big one. Uh, and they don't need a huge enclosure either. And they're easy to feed. They're omnivorous. Uh, they're going to eat more bugs like insects than anything else but they're super fun to watch that's why i think they're so underrated they're beautiful as well um they've got like these green and blues and just amazing colors so jeweled lacertas i think should be in every reptile shop these guys are amazing creatures and they are for sure underrated and overlooked so number two is jeweled lacertas and before we get to number one let's just go with an honorable mention here i think and the reason i didn't put this guy in the list uh blue tongue skinks is because they're not really underrated in a lot of places. A lot of places they're picking up giant popularity, but where I am, not a lot of people have these guys. They're really hard to find. They're expensive if you can find them. So I think uh, Blue Tongue Skinks, like my guy Irwin here, are gonna be on the list as an honorable mention, not quite top five, but Blue Tongue Skinks are a species you wanna watch out for. I would definitely recommend checking out the care guide and seeing if maybe this lizard is for you. And our number one, number one underrated reptile i think is the garter snake and here's why garter snakes are snakes that you probably saw in your yard when you were kids that's how i found out about reptiles well that's not how i found out but that's probably the first reptile i ever saw out in the wild was a garter snake i remember it quite vividly and my mother screamed and ran and there's nothing to be afraid of it's a garter snake and the really cool thing is they stay pretty small you can cohab them. A lot of people will recommend that you keep them in groups, which is very different to a lot of other animals. In fact, if in Manitoba, uh, in Canada, where I'm from, not Manitoba, but the country of Canada, uh, you're gonna see these giant hibernaculums. Uh, and they're in Ontario too, like the province that I'm in. And there's that's where thousands of these uh, garter snakes go for the winter into these holes. And they all kind of cohabitate together during the winter months and then they come out during the summer months or in the spring and they create what's called a breeding ball. So a bunch of males get together and they kind of all swarm a female. It's the craziest breeding behavior that you've ever seen. It is so crazy and some males will change their pheromones or uh, whatever the correct terminology is for snakes so that they, the males think that they're a female so they can warm up fast enough to 
It's the craziest thing. Their diet is super cool too because if you don't want to feed them rodents, mice or rats, you can actually feed these guys things like fish or worms. So you don't have to feed a mammal if you're really against that type of thing, which I totally understand. And they don't get super big. They do, some of them will musk on you if, you know, depending on where you get them and what they're like. Uh, but another thing as well is they come in a million different colors and patterns and there's a bunch of different types of garter snakes, red-sided, checkers. There's all sorts of different garter snakes and you just gotta be careful, right? Because where I live, you're not allowed to keep native species and we do have a couple species of garter snakes here. So just be careful, check out your local laws. And that's number one, garter snakes. So that's my list of the top five underrated reptiles, in my opinion, in the pet trade right now. What are your top five? Put them in the comment section below. What did I miss? What should I have added? What should I have excluded from the list? And of course, what should ne next week's video be about? I always take that from the comment section below. If you haven't already, hit subscribe. I'd appreciate that. So thanks for watching this video. And because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday.